Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. My name is Ahmed Sohail. Welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to size an off-grid solar photovoltaic system, discussing what are the components needed, what are the steps and procedures for designing such a system, along with the working and its diagram to showing its function and operational features. Without further ado, let's get to the video. So for the components needed, obviously we're going to be using the solar PV panel to generate electricity from the sun which is then going to be, depending upon how many panels we calculate and how they're connected, to be connected to the charge controller to understand its voltage level, to charge the battery at night since the solar panel won't be operating. So depending upon how many days we want the battery to be running, whether one day, two days, uh, and the voltage the, or the capacity of the battery uh, to then connect to the inverter, to run the inverter and to connect to the AC loads, uh, and that's pretty much what we're going to be using for the off-grid solar system. So this is the, you know, the diagram of the off-grid solar system. As you can see, uh, as discussed, you know, we need a solar panel that's generating electricity, goes to the solar charge controller, you know, making sure all the parameters and features are correct, charging the battery uh, during the night so that it can be used. Then from that, you know, DC current to the inverter, all the uh, specifications, correct rating, to then co convert DC to AC to the loads. Of course, this is just a general um, diagram, general components. There's no circuit breakers. There's no uh, DC combiner boxes. Just simple, straightforward, just to give an idea, you know, just a rough, uh, rough diagram of how the system is going to function. Right, so since we know what are the components needed, for the off-grid system and how it works, functions. So now the steps that we're gonna be calculating is determining the energy demand, you know, how many appliances we have, what are the power ratings, how many hours we use in a day, and for that we'll, we'll calculate total energy per year. From that we can estimate what, what is the correct inverter to be used, the correct requirements, the rating, what uh, what specifications it will need to be connected to the battery to make sure that the battery is then properly, you know, sized with the, how many batteries going to be needing in parallel or series, the capacity, all that stuff, the efficiency. To make then after that we're going to be calculating the solar panel array, how many solar panels we'll need, uh, what what's the 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 VOC the uh, open circuit voltage, the current uh, maximum uh, power current voltage, and the efficiencies. So from then on, we'll then be calculating the charge controller. So then make sure that all the right charge controller rating, the current rating, you know, which type of charge controller we'll be using. So you know, these are all the, the main system uh, procedure we're going to be following. Right, so here is the load energy demand. Um, we're showing you the appliances. As you can see, we have ceiling fans, TV, air conditioner, microwave, lights, laptop. Uh, of course, there's you know um, other refrigerator, washing machine, um, the other things that weren't mentioned. But it's just a general idea uh, with the power rating here, uh, number of appliances, total power. Uh, total power adding up to 2460 watts, 2.4 kilowatts. Uh, how many hours used per day? Hours per day, 758167. From that, we'll multiply to get 1120 watt hours per day, 507,200, adding up to 12970 watt hours per day. Of course, to get per year, you just multiply by 365 days in a year. So multiply that for each, then you can add up to get the answer. Now, this is pretty much a standard uh, analysis of how many appliances you have and to give you the 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 result you need right so now after we have you know established and understood what's the total yearly energy demand from step one now step two the inverter sizing I've gone with the Frona Xeon plus 3 kVA uh, solar hybrid inverter this one is you know it's a pretty good inverter, you know, because since our total power for the appliances was 2,000, 2.4 kilowatts, 
it's better to size up so that you know in case there's any fluctuations with the motor loads from there there's taking the account uh of any surge factors or power spikes so uh it's better to go for not 2.5 kilowatt but 3 kilowatt uh so as you can see it's 80 amps mppt solar charge controller built in so you of course a hybrid inverter so uh you don't have to worry about the charge controller it's already built in um but we did we did separate calculations for that anyway pure sine wave inverter compatible with wi-fi high pv input voltage range it's going to be important because the pv input voltage range is 120 to 500 volts dc so yeah um built-in anti-dust harsh environment smart charge designed to optimize battery life compatible with lithium super capacitor so you know this is a pretty good inverter that we have uh, that I've selected for this type of system based on the requirements needed right so this slide is a detailed uh, specification for the inverter the inverter model as mentioned was chosen to be Xeon 300,000 volt ampere uh, just to give you some idea this is the charging specifications AC charging unit maximum 60 amps uh, for the batteries different types AGM gel battery or the the charging uh, voltage levels, floating voltage charge, 27 volts DC, uh, MPPT solar charging mode. So for the inverter, for us, 3000 watts. This is the maximum PV power, so we can go above 3000 watts. Uh, nominal PV voltage, so standard system voltage, 240 volts DC. PV array MPPT voltage range, so that means the maximum power point voltage range is around 90 to 430 volts DC. Pretty good uh maximum pv array open circuit voltage so the voc when the when the when the circuit panels are not connected that's the voc the open circuit voltage it's higher than the mppt voltage that's why the voc the maximum is going to be higher than the mppt so you can see it's 450 volts dc that's the maximum 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 we can go maximum charging current the ac charger plus the solar charger so uh charge controller with the ac charger 80 amps all right so that's the solar charge control that's the requirements 80 amps right so on to step three battery sizing so the formula for calculating battery bank capacity amp hour is dividing the daily consumption in kilowatt hours by the depth of discharge times the efficiency of the battery times the system voltage that is going to be multiplied with the days of autonomy so how many days you would like to run your off-grid system without electricity so purely relying on the batteries so one, one day two days three days that's up to you uh the daily consumption for our case is 12,970 kilowatt hours depth of discharge 50 percent this basically if you don't know what it means it's the rate at which the battery is discharging um, so you know you want to make sure it's discharging at a slow rate so that it doesn't lose its efficiency it's you know have a longer battery life um, higher number of cycles higher number of cycles meaning that it's a better chance of charging and discharging and at a rate of 50 percent it's ideal uh, assumption efficiency of the battery 85 normally it's 85 to 90 percent but uh, I've taken 85% just case safe measures system voltage 24 volts the days of autonomy I've taken one day you can take two days three days that will increase the battery bank capacity uh, but for our case you can see it's 1272 amp hours if you want how many batteries you will need in parallel just take in uh, just take a random uh, battery capacity so I've taken 200 amp hour you know divide that you get 6.35 so six batteries in parallel and obviously i've taken 12 volts 200 amp hour batteries which means i would need a system voltage of 24 volts so i would have to, i would have to connect the batteries in series two in series six in parallel so total batteries would be eight because 12 volts 12 volts in series gives us 24 volts and then 200 amp hour in in, in parallel six increase the current of around 1200 amp hour so this is would be the total total battery sizing right so now after finding the total battery sizing and how many we need now we're going to go for the solar panels so make sure that we're supplying enough voltage and current to the batteries to be charging it uh, so for the solar panels we're going to be using the formula simple and straightforward we're going to be you know dividing the total energy that the appliance 
uh, will be need to be run on the solar panels per year with the the area or the location that you're the the sun is going to be uh, getting or giving per year so and then you're going to multiply with the system efficiency now the system efficiency of the solar panel i've taken around 70% this is just a assumption that i've taken a rough guess nowadays you can take 80% this is due to the losses that the solar panels can uh, can receive, such as you know the shading, the wiring losses, mismatch, the degradation of the solar panels. When if the high higher temperatures, uh, you can lose its efficiency and and its temperature coefficients. So which is why the solar panels won't produce the the exact number of uh, kilowatts as needed or as required, which is why I've taken the system efficiency around 70% effectiveness. So, you know, after applying the total energy per year, 4,736, divide with the, for my location uh, in Pakistan, it's around 2,953. Of course, this is not accurate as well because that's too much. Obviously, yes, my area location does have lots of uh, sunlight. So, but uh, it's, it's not, Again, that accurate to be, uh, you know, giving this number, but I've just used it as a reference. So 70% efficiency, giving me the solar system size kilowatt 2.29, rounding up to 2.3 kilowatts. Now this, of course, is to be um, taken into consideration that the solar panels will be running all of my loads, 100% of my loads. If you want. The solar panels to cover 70% of your loads, so, so to be covering 70%, not all the appliances you know that is running. Then you can multiply the total energy per year, which is 4,736 times. You can multiply with 70%, because that will give you uh, the, the the required energy that the solar panel will be covering which is the 70% of the loads. So multiply with 70%. And then, then you apply that in the same formula uh, with the same uh, sunlight hours and efficiency to give you the, the the solar system in kilowatts. It'll be less for 70% uh, of the loads running. It'd be around maybe two kilowatts or something like that. But anyways, so yeah, 2,300 watts. To define how many number of panels you need to take a rating, a power rating of the panels, I've taken around 315 watts. So therefore, 2,300 divided by 315 gives 7.3 panels, rounding up to 7. Now, why not 8? The reason why is because if the rated is 2.3 kilowatts, and if I go above that rated, eight panels, then it would mean I would have a solar panel of 2,400 kilowatts because eight times 315 give us 2,400, I think, I believe. So, which is why to go uh, right, re reaching the minimum requirements of the solar system of seven panels, seven panels, now it's better to have them in series and in parallel so that you can make sure you have the right number of voltage and current. Uh, the MPPT voltage and current ratings of two strings, uh, three and four series panels. I'll discuss it in the next slide of why I've chosen for this configuration. So yeah, this is the solar panel specifications. I've chosen a Trina Solar 315 watts polycrystalline solar module. This is specifications. Open circuit voltage 45.6 volts. Maximum power point voltage 37.1. That's when it's connected. It's going to be lower, obviously, than the open circuit voltage. Short circuit current, uh, 9 amps. Maximum power point current, 8.51. Of course, these are the calculations uh, for when if if I were to connect them in parallel and in series altogether. So the reason why I told you to connect both solar panels in parallel and series is because in series connection, you know, the voltage adds up. And if one of the panels, let's say it has a fire, you know, going on or this shade that's covering the solar panels, it's going to affect the overall voltage and it's going to reduce its uh, performance to to cover the loads and operate the loads appliances which is why it's better to have a parallel connection where even though it's going to increase the current but but not much as you can see by the calculations but the parallel connection the voltage will be the same because the first string will have three panels and the second string will have 
four panels so four and three seven panels but they're in parallel connection so if one side one string has shading or if let's say fire occurred the other string won't be affected by it so therefore it won't reduce the voltage levels to be needed to operate the the loads running or the inverter so which is why it's better to recommend it to have both system configurations of parallel and series connection right so last but not least we have step 5 charger solar charge controller sizing this is optional because as you can see in the inverter sizing it already has a built-in solar charge controller 80 amps and you know the good thing about it is that technology is advancing in a way that you can go for a hybrid solar inverter for the off-grid and the reason why is you can go for the hybrid is because you can connect the battery to the inverter straight ahead even with the solar panels can connect directly to the inverter so even though you don't have to connect it to the grid because it's a hybrid inverter you have the option of choosing to whether you want to connect to the grid and connect connecting the battery for off-grid backup time but with the hybrid you can also choose to you know just have separately for off-grid battery uh, supply or you can connect to the, to the to the grid so which is why the hybrid inverter is you know it's it's a convenient uh, option to go for and therefore you, do, you don't really need a charge controller but I, I did it just in case just to give you an idea of how to do it so if i have a 2300 watt solar array charging a battery voltage of 24 volts as you can see in the previous slide the previous steps the calculations dividing the 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 power with the voltage gives us the current of 95.83 amps of course if you multiply 1.25 1, 1 for safety factor it gives us 119 0.79 amps which means we would need a charge controller rated at 120 amps mppt now of course it's just giving us a again a, a round of estimation uh, that if the solar panel were to be generating 2300 watts which they won't they were generating let's say 2000 watts 2000 watts divided by 24 around uh, 87 85 something like that so I mean it's still I don't think it's not going to be uh, be rated at 120 amps for sure, but you know, just to take into consideration, we need 120 amps and PPT. Uh, so, for example, if the if the rating of the maximum power point uh, charge controller has the input a voltage of 195 volts, that means that number of series panels is maximum PV input voltage, which is 195 volts, divided by the open circuit voltage rating of 45.6 volts gives us 4.27 which means I would need four in series panels and three because four plus three is seven so yeah this is the number of series panels four and three series panels number of strings so how many parallel connections I would need is you would have to divide the number of PV panels found with the number of series so number of PV panels seven total divide with the number of series four gives us 1.75 rounding up to two strings so two string parallel connections one with four series panels and the other with three series panels and the charge controller current is found by multiplying the charge uh, the short circuit current isc with the number of strings so 1.25 Oh, oh, sorry i multiplied with the, the safety factor of 1.25 so you get nine times two times 1.25 so around 22 amps the charge controller current rating uh, so again there's that fluctuation between 120 amps to 20 to 22 amps uh, you know around that so so there you have it this is the and it's a guide uh, and off just a you know rough estimate it's not accurate you know of course I didn't take account into the circuit breakers the PV combiner boxes the wiring how thick the wiring uh, has to be to connect them and yeah there's there's many other detailed uh, factors taken into consideration the losses uh, how would you c construct it you know which orientation the panels would be and all that sorts but this is a general idea of what the components you'll need how they're gonna be calculated roughly and you know what are the 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 working of the technology the components for the solar system so anyways if you have enjoyed the video make sure to like comment subscribe it and hopefully in the future I'll do more videos covering on grid or hybrid solar system and how they're going to be calculated and sized based on the technologies that's going out there anyways take care stay safe my name is Ahmed Sohail peace out